Part 2 of Rainbow Warriors with Blue Thunder. This is a visit with a person of high strangeness. My name is Elijah Sanchez, and this is Part 2 of Rainbow Warriors, and I will be your tour guide for today. Didn't take very long, did it? No. Yeah, just one week. Let's refresh their memory just a, a little bit. The story is about the valley not having any water. It's in drought in drought. Mm -hmm. They wanted to spend millions of dollars with cloud seed. Mm -hmm, with cloud seeding. Somewhere along the line they met Blue Thunder. Yeah. And he said, don't do that. I can fix that for you. Because you're poisoning the land and mm -hmm. the animals. Yeah. So so last week we saw a, a councilwoman talking mm -hmm. and several people that you wouldn't think that. They wouldn't believe them or they wouldn't even think them. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so this week it's kind of, um, it shows more of how it works, what he did, and what he accomplished, and we will run into some of the, some of the people again that we met last week, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you had some thoughts on that? On the Rainbow Warriors? Yeah. Um, hmm, yeah, I had a couple thoughts. Um, I thought it was kind of cool how he used the drum to send the vibrations to the earth to keep the heartbeat going. And I also thought it was interesting how every color of lightning means something else. Like it's giving to the earth. Like if it's pink lightning, then it's sending love to the earth. You actually remember the colors, I don't. And then all I heard was pink and blue. And blue meant it was sending wisdom to the earth. Yeah. Well, you know, I have this lamp. Yeah. That uh, I saw the program. We showed, we showed to him at the end, huh? Yeah. Um, I programmed what color I wanted what to be. And sometimes I sit here and it just flips the... Yeah. The last time you were here, it went orange all the way, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so it kind of shows us how we can... Pro we can program everything, huh? Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. So, um, how cool is that? So, this time, this time the insert deals with mostly ceremony. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And uh, they even brought in Aztec dancers. Yeah, from Mexico. Oh, had you ever seen any? I've never seen Aztec dancers. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. well, and, and we're talking in the past tense because we just watched the clip, and so. Yeah. So the friends, they're getting ready to watch it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and like we were talking about, the, the, the way I met Blue Thunder was, I, I went somewhere and there was this crystal that called me. So I'm standing there talking to the crystal. Mm -hmm. And he said, the crystal's talking to you? I told him, yeah, and he said, what does it say? Because when we have things like that, they're personal. Yeah, they're only supposed to talk to their owner, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's how, that's how this whole thing was going. And you say you go for walks. What what do you what are your thoughts when you do that? Well, I just think peaceful. I kind of let everything like the drama and stress just like don't think about it. Just admire the trees, the animals, and nature. Do you know what the word meditation means? Um, not really. Okay. This might not be everybody's interpretation, but my interpretation of meditation is when you clear your mind and you and you leave it open to other things. Mm -hmm. Some people have to sit and really concentrate. I can go shopping and think about other things. So would you say you're meditating? Yeah, I guess if you can put it that way. I was probably me I meditate, I guess, when I walk through the woods because I just I'm peaceful and I'm calm. You see, if I sit here and meditate, you know what happens to me? Huh. I go to sleep. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> so. You've been in Washington how long? Two years. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Of Washington? It rains a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not used to that because in South Dakota it doesn't rain that much. Uh-huh. And the forests are a lot different here. Uh-huh. They're more of kind of like a lot of moss and ferns. Mm -hmm. In South Dakota, it's all like kind of dry forest, like a lot of pine trees and 
Wind. Yeah, wind. Wind. <laughs> um, I came through the Badlands one time, but I couldn't. Yeah. It was too dangerous to. Uh, I didn't know. I came through there in April. It was in an RV that wasn't a good time near to go there. Yeah. The Badlands are really cool. Cool, nah. Mm -hmm. There's a little place down in Oregon. Looks like the Badlands, uh, mm -hmm. but just for a few miles. Yeah. So, uh, given a choice, let let's say you wake up tomorrow and you're 25. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you want to live? I want to live in Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. How do you get to Colorado? How would I get to Colorado? N no, no, no. But I mean, why Colorado? Because it snows a lot there, and I like the snow. And there's a lot of diverse animals, and the people are nice there. And Colorado, I don't know, the air there is kind of refreshing and thin. Thin. And there's a lot of mountains to admire, and you can go hiking and snowboarding and skiing. Well, last week you told us you want to be a veterinarian. Yeah. What's your second choice? My second choice would probably be a. I never really thought about a second choice. Veterinarian has always been in my mind. Because I've always wanted to help out animals. Mm hmm. Yeah, in some places they treat animals better than people, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So, let's see. Uh, should we point out anything about the, um, about the clip or? About the clip? Uh huh. I, you want to play the clip now, or you want to get a lead in, or? You can play the clip now if you want. Yeah, it's your show today. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? Um, let's play the clip. We play the clip? Yeah. See you later, huh? See you later. <laughs> Across the way is the Big Bear Transfer Station, and so this is where the trash is being covered. So the trash is there and it has illness and sickness within it. So this takes the earth out of vibration, which is adding to the problem of the droughts. We're practicing earth wisdom, earth knowledge. No matter what culture, what teaching, whatever we have received, it's the same. Tradition is asking for the right. Move a little rock or a stone or a grass. Just to ask for permission. This whole mountain still needs lots of help. So when I leave, my messages are for people begin to be the practitioners and fix the land that's needed. We're going to do the ceremony to connect to the to the mist. The mist is electrical energy. I knew that this mountain was going to be a very powerful mountain to heal, so we needed all the help we can. So with prayers and thoughts and intentions, sent the message to the Great Spirit to, to send the helpers in. So what we have this morning is this mist that's surrounding Sugarloaf. This is the energy that will hold things together. And as we talk about consciousness, we'll put our thoughts and sound into these clouds it encircles this whole mountain, touches the water, the springs, the trees, the rocks, the animals, and the humans. This energy is what we are. That cloud is electrical energy. That's what I am. That's what each and every one is. It's spirit. We all hold spirit. We begin to understand this. The whole earth comes into peace. And right now, this is what will bring harmony to the whole earth. It's not a mystery at all. It's only understanding how it works. Nothing is a mystery. Everything is wisdom. The ravens, they're black, and so any darkness around us, they come in and clear the darkness off. So they follow me wherever I've been going, so they keep the dark energies or the dark spirits, and they clear it and clean it off, and this is what they're doing. Because everything works together. They help us, we help them. This is the way it works. The awakening of the Rainbow Warriors would come to life at this time the new dreams and visions to speak about the rainbows. The rainbow warriors are us who work with the knowledge and the wisdom of the earth at this time to speak about why that tree has water in it, why it radiates with the rainbows, and why it's electrical energy, and why the electrical energy goes into the roots, and the roots is the water which has electrical shock that touches the, qu the quartz crystal, that energizes the quartz crystal to send the electrical blanket across the earth with electrical field that goes into our feet, that goes into the plants and makes the flowers grow, makes the trees grow, the animals connect to it, they grow, the insects grow from the energy, everything grows from spirit. We're all spirit, we're all electrical energy, and we're all water. Understanding water becomes a great knowledge and wisdom. When we know this kind of wisdom, we know why it's so important not to cut the trees down. The dead trees here have sent a message not to touch them. Why? 
And the tree said, tell them this, that that tree still holds electrical magnetic energy. It's like a lightning rod standing there. And when the mountains get out of harmony, the electricity needs to come back into these peaks. So what's happening up here? Lightning. Why is lightning needed here? It's like a dead man falls down, a heart attack or a woman. They take the two electrical nodes and they stick it on that person's chest. It goes, doo doop, doo doop, doo doop. And their heart starts beating. Their water starts circulating. It means the blood. So that's the lightning shooting into the earth, repairing and fixing it, what the humans are doing every day by disconnecting it down below. And so it recharges again. If you happen to be in an area where it's being recharged, you got to be careful because you might get enlightened, knocked down by the lightning, and then have to be restored. And pretty soon when you wake up, hey, I'm hearing voices. I think I can see the angels. Well, exactly. That's what happened. They got put back into order. So now they're beginning to understand everything holds a consciousness. It's very powerful. It's the wisdom and the knowledge of the earth is that electrical energy. So the trees, they've been enlightened when they've been struck with lightning and they hold the energy in the earth so they were picked to keep the earth sacred. And so that tree that's standing over there dead is important because it's still holding the energy that's needed. If you cut that tree down, right where you cut it off is, the light leaks out, the light force leaks out, the lifeblood of the earth. What we're doing is sealing the holes on the earth that was done with the mining and the development to the gold, to the silver, to the clay, to the uranium, to all of the things that's done on this mountain is the holes that have drilled into the side of the mountains, causing the earth to go out of harmony and out of balance. So she has a high fever and she's sick. It's because of man's manipulation and not understanding the truth and how these things happen to the earth. So these are some of the messages that we'd like people to begin to understand and to stop these things, like what's going on in Alaska, cutting the trees down, cutting a hole in the earth, and developing that area will change the North Pole. And with the earth's out of balance already and they start doing those things, ooh. This year has been kind of a really interesting year. Uh, I had an opportunity to take my granddaughter up to uh, to Dry Lake in uh, the second week in July. And almost always that lake is, hence the name, dry. This year it was just brimming full. And the snowpack was all the way down the lake from the top of San Gorgonio. And that is really unusual. Two weeks later, we took a trip up to Dollar Lake. This is like the third week in July, almost the first of August, and there were icebergs, literally little icebergs in this little lake, and it was phenomenal because uh, part of a little bit of a glacier that, that had uh, developed from the snowpack coming down into that lake basin. And uh, it was a really a unique, unique situation because usually this time of year when we're back up into that high country, it's pretty dry. Maybe the major streams have a little trickle in them. This year, the major streams were flowing in July and August. In fact, they're still up there. We were up there, now we're looking at the first week in November. We were up there uh, just last week, and there's still an abundance of water in all the, uh, all the minor streams, which is really impressive to us because the vegetation is really full and, 